Hello and welcome, dear listener. Today, on her feast day, I have the pleasure to interview the mystic and writer Lars Mu for the second time. And now we speak about the important role of Maria Magdalena, especially in our time. What is her message to us? I ask him. And Lars tells us, the listeners, about the hidden power of the Eros. He gives her a voice, and through his lived wisdom, he gives us an opening on who we really are, and shows us how we can, should, and may take our role and responsibility to contribute and build our world as it is meant to be. Welcome, uh, Lars. Thank you very much. In the podcast, The Hidden Voice, um, we talked before a few months ago, and I'm very delighted and cheerful that you um, took the invitation again to talk further. Yes. And uh, what I would like and love to talk about with you is about the role of Mar Maria Magdalene, Maria Magdalene, mm -hmm. her role in the past together with Jeshua, and yeah. the importance of our, her archetype in our time, in this time. Yes. I would love to talk about that. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's perhaps we could go back how you see her role in the past together with Joshua. Her role in the past? She, I think she had a very, very important role. Um, actually, I think it's in it's impossible to talk about Yeshua or Jesus without also talking about her. And I think that also goes for a lot of other of the, the um, male avatars that we have heard about, that we should remember that most of them also had a female, uh, not counterpart, but a partner, you know, equal partner. And that is something that is almost forgotten many times. And I think without, if you only have the one and missing the other, you only have half the picture. So Mary Magdalene is fulfilling the picture of Yeshua and the st his story. So f to me that she was very, very, very important at that time. She was the teacher of the female uh, disciples in the group of Jeshua, and he had he was the the teacher of the males. So, okay. And um, what did she mean? What did she gave Jeshua? What was important for him? Yeah. What is what, you could ask that question to any man and 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 woman uh, at any time. I think. What? Why are we? male and female you know it is like Yeshua he said it himself in the gospel of Thomas he said when the two become one when the female and the male become one they will be able to move mountains so what he's saying is actually that we can do so much more when we become one, you know, but there is more to it than just female and, and male, or, uh, because female is just not any woman, or, or male is not just any man, for example. It is that I am, as a man, need to, to develop and sharpen and purify um, the masculine uh, uh, essence within me, and all women should should purify the the feminine within them, and and so to speak sharpen the tool because it is a kind of a pole or energy. Because if we talk about women women is many things you know uh, and and male 
if you talk about males, men, it's it's many things, you know, because we are uh, only very few of of men and women are actually purified to to the essence of masculine or feminine. And I think that the feminine is all about the heart and is symbolized by the heart. What, and, and that has something to do with feelings and empathy and so forth. But there's a lot of women who, do, who, 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 who are, are taken by their feelings. They can't control their feelings. So they are overwhelmed by it and they act accordingly. And, and sometimes not so so um, so positive. And in the same way, the masculine is the the the, the intellect. And the, you know, a lot of men, if you haven't purified your thinking to and make it crystal clear, it it tends to run around, you know, and not going anywhere but just going into, you know, endless intellectual um, thinking and talking and, but it doesn't really go anywhere, you know. So, of course, for men, it must be also to purify the thoughts and to really sharpen that uh, essence or that tool of thinking. But when that's done, and these two things are, are working together. I mean, it's amazing, you know, you can start to think about it if the feeling of the feminine is really mastered and the thinking of the male is mastered. There will be no noise, you know, because too much feeling and too much outpouring all the time of, of feelings and emotions, that can create noise. The same if you you are going round and round in in thought uh, patterns that doesn't go anywhere. It creates noise. So in that way, I think we can all, uh, as men and women, start to 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 work on ourselves in that way. When that is done, women should try and and integrate the masculine within them because all women are carrying a little bit of the masculine within them. The same goes for the men, that we integrate that little mas uh, feminine that we are carrying. Because again, you could say that the drop, the fem the drop of, femi uh, of the feminine essence within man is, this, is that elixir who is going to awaken and to purify the masculine, while the, the the clarified masculine within a woman, or in, will clarify, help clarify the feminine uh, essence, the sacred feminine within a woman. So you see, we have really something to do together. I don't remember if um, last time we spoke that I talked about um, that saying that Yeshua is, he said in the in the Gospel of the Nazarene, where he's talking about uh, Mary Magdalene. He no, said, we, are, we didn't talk about that last time. Okay. He said, I and my bride are one, exactly as Mary and the Magdalene, whom I have chosen to myself as an example, is one with me. So he's talking about a bride on one side that he's one with, and Mary Magdalene on the other side. And bride in Aramaic is kalta. And kalta can also point to an inner feminine principle. So that is what he's talking about, that he has become one with that principle within him. And he has seen that principle being mirrored in an earthly woman, Mary and the Magdalene. And therefore, he has chosen her to be his example of the feminine or his teacher so and a mirror of that principle so he will he will get that essence of the feminine to purify the masculine and i think that is just so beautiful said because it it captures everything 
it holds everything within it. And the same goes for Mary Magdalene have given Yeshua something, uh, and Yeshua have given her something to develop and purify their very beings, you know, so that eternal flame or seed of love within them that we all carry in our hearts can be nourished and unfold and grow. So in that way we can, but you see, the problem is that much too often couples, men and women, women, or two men, it can also be two men or two women, as long as it's masculine and feminine, you see. But when couples, they, they get married today, they haven't got, they don't have any time to spare really working with what a, a relationship should really be all about. Because we all need a house to live in, we need cars, positions and children, good jobs and a, a good income and two holidays every year, a summer house and this and that. And suddenly we are all caught up in things that is absolutely foreign to the real purpose of relationships. It doesn't mean that we should not have a house to live in, of course, or have all these things, but maybe there should be, um, we should try to find out which comes first, you know, what do we, what is the main thing in our relationship? And I think that's why a lot of people also get, um, they get married and very, they also get separated again, divorced. And it's a sad thing really, when, uh, if we haven't really got into the, to the real deal, as we say. Yeah. Thank you for this, um, all those insights and layers of insights that you give us. Um, yeah, I know that the story of Maria Magdalene, uh, she's written out of the history um, and with all kinds of consequences in this time, I think. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important that her archetype speaks? Uh, our archetype comes alive just in this time. She's very important in Christianity. First and foremost, because she was written out very, very, very fast. It took them 325 years to character murder her, so to speak, and, and turn her from a highly initiated moon priestess into a simple prostitute. So, Instead of her, or not instead of her, but as a, 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 what do you call it, a substitute for her, they invented Mother Mary. Because people in four, the year 400 after Christ, they really wanted their, their female goddess back. So the, the church fathers, they came up with the idea that Mother Mary should be the one. And she was made, uh, put up on a pedestal and uh, she had done uh, wonderful work, you could say, ever since because she had brought hope and healing to millions of people and still does to this day. But there was one thing that was written out and it was Eros, Eros, you know. And if you look around you today, you will see that we live in a totally pornographic uh, society and we haven't, we haven't even come close of what that power of the eros is all about. You know, the serpent of paradise and the apple, they, they went down the drain together with Mary the Magdalene, without us knowing what it was all about. We were just told in, in Christianity that the serpent was evil, you know. But you should remember that in the New Testament, Yeshua is actually saying, be wise as snakes or serpents and innocence as doves. And you could say that Mother Mary have represented the dove, the innocence and the purifying, but the wisdom, the Sophia, 
the Magdalene hasn't been around, you know, and especially not connected with with our with eros and libido and that very very uh, powerful force that libido are uh, have been turned into pornography and it has absolutely nothing to do with it so it is you know everybody knows that our eros or sexuality is a very very strong power and it can really turn the heads on on us all if we don't really come to our senses so to speak and that i think that is why mary Magdalene came in 25 years ago for another visit here in order to point out the importance of us being whole person and not just being up here but also being have all the chakras opened you know and being balanced could you tell us more about that a clear pure eros what that means it means that for example what is eros it is a very very it's a creative force you know it's at the root of of the very creation you know we have the seed and we have, you know, the seed and we have the, the grail, so to speak, that carry the seed until it, it's and nourish it, until it is um, ready to bloom, you know. It is like any birth, so to speak. And nothing comes into this world but through a woman. So the feminine is in is actually the manifesting power you know the seed from the masculine goes into the feminine and she carries it and it comes to her and then it is manifest so it is actually what that process that most people know is the process of how the whole universe came to be it's a process of every time you have a creative idea of something that will benefit whole of mankind then it's the same process the masculine and the feminine it's the seed of love that is being nourished and opened but if you don't know about this no it's not because that people are evil or something it's just because we don't know you know nobody have told us about these things that we we tend to reach out for for um, for things that are not that, that are not real you know and uh, try to create all kinds of uh, things that can excite us and and make this life of ours uh, into an experience of excitement and we need all the time new new toys and new things and so a lot of things are created but it's not created within that sacred space of 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 consciousness that knows how real creation is done you know yeah it's completely different than what we uh, were teached about and um, so important that this knowledge is shared and that this conscious consciousness constant how do you say that word consciousness yeah consciousness is um is awakened yeah yeah and why why did she came again 25 years ago you were very specific a few oh, minutes yeah, but, uh, around that time it was like she had a new renaissance she had been here you know coming and trying and then she disappeared again because we did not really understand it then came an, a, a sec, a, another wave of Ma the Magdalene around the time of um, of uh, 2000 in the new millennium that was when she came really in again you, you remember Dan Brown spoke and my yes. own Magdalene came at the same time and a lot of book of the Magdalene have come ever since. Yeah. 
Uh, I started to to study uh, her really when I got um, the first English edition of uh, some of the Gospels that didn't make it into the New Testament, yeah. called the Nakamadi Library. And there was, for example, the the Gospel of Thomas that I just mentioned, but also a Gospel of Philip. And in the Gospel of Philip is where we can actually read that Mary Magdalene was the consort of Jeshua. There was three Marys around him, his mother, his sister, and his lover. It says so in the Gospel of Philip. Mm -hmm. And Mary Magdalene was the disciple that Jeshua often kissed on the mouth, we found out later. And why he kissed her on the mouth was not just because they were lovers, but also because she was an initiated person. And that was how the initiated men, women alike, uh, they kissed each other to rever each other, to bless each other, and to recognize each other. And you remember Judas kissed Jesus when he was pointing Jesus out to, to the Roman soldiers. He said, the one I kiss is the one. But why should he kiss him? He could just have pointed him out from the bushes. No, he had to kiss him because he, Judas was also initiated. And I believe that Judas knew and Yeshua and Judas had, this was something that was arranged, that this was the, uh, Judas' uh, uh, job to do this. But he, he, he felt it so overwhelming afterwards that he, he went and hanged himself. Okay. Uh, he could not bear that, but that he had to do this. But Judas was also initiated. So Mary the Magdalene was definitely uh, initiated, highly definiated. Yeah. yeah. While we are talking, I I still have also the feeling what you told a few minutes ago about the errors and about um, the creation. Yeah. And I, while you were talking, it was also moving through through me. And I, um, it means a lot that that the part of Mary Magdalene and her wisdom, uh, also called the Sophia, was written out, it means for me that a part of Christianity uh, that I never could experience the full, the fullness of the Christianity because that was kept outside. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that now um, the importance about what you told before. Yeah. And I'm, I'm yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm processing that in the meantime while we are talking. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, um, because another question that I have written down is, um, why is why is her archetype so important just in this time? Um, and I also have the feeling, what would it mean when we could embrace the femininity together with the masculinity in ourselves? What what kind of effect would that have in our society? What would change? Oh, <laughs> it, everything would change because it would mean that if we are talking about the purified feminine and the purified masculine, there would be clarity everywhere. Uh, the clarity of thought and the clarity of feelings meaning that you would know that whatever you took part of, you had a responsibility in any relationship you were part of. There would never be any pointing of fingers anymore. That, or the, you know, today many people, they, they project all the things that they cannot carry themselves towards other people. And it's like, a common sickness, you know, illness in our society today, that nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. And it, anything goes, you know, everything goes, you know, and and we just have accepted it. You know, we accept that our politicians are more or less uh, untrue, you know, and are not telling. And it's like nothing means 
anything anymore. And you should just imagine when, and people, they just, it is also, there is a, a very strong, um, um, what do you call it when you, you know, ah, it slips my mind, you know, but there is a, a tendency that we are more interested in the, in the surface than of the core of the inner being of people, you know, if we can show a good facade, then it doesn't matter what is in behind that, you know, it's much, so much about image and all these things. And I think it's naturally because when we focus so much on on uh, on the surface and on, on facade it will be something that we carry on we give to our children and our children and grandchildren they think oh that is how we need to be in order to be a success here you know mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what you do uh, it's it's just before the you know uh, shooting uh, five people will give you 15 minutes of of some kind of attention and then you are locked up forever afterwards. But it, it, it is like we have totally forgotten who we really are. And um, yeah, I really pray and hope to that, that we will, we need to, to, to really continue repeating this thing, not just in words, but also in deed, you know, we, we need to show what there is a difference of just saying something and doing something different. It, you know, it creates noise. And yeah. if people knew how, how, how um, genuinely enlightened they already are, they would not play around with it like that. Because we are told in the New Testament, don't hide that light underneath a bushel. Don't hide it away. And when you are just work sliding over the surface and not going inside, then you hide your light underneath a bushel. And I think that's very much part of why Mary the Magdalene is also here. She's part of that revelation and this um, to show that, you know, it's because I think also people have this feeling that if we talk about things like this, it is religion and it is holy and it is fake, you know, and this, and I, I think it's understandable. I really understand that. But when we have understood that and understood that it's just because our perception of it is, is screwed, it's not the thing in themselves, you know, it's not this, it's not the sacred seed of love itself, but it's our idea of it. It's not the religion that's something wrong with, but with our, it's our perception of it. There's nothing wrong with Christianity. It's just our perception of it. And if we, we don't know what is in there, we should not judge it before we have opened it up and seen what is in, within it. And that is really very much what I, I'm trying to do in my work, to inspire people to do that. And could and you tell us, us more about who we really are? Yeah, we are enlightened being. We, you know, it's it's funny, you know, because it's it's we, our holy book, the Bible. You know, in the Old Testament, it said that God created man in His image. What does that mean? What is God? God is consciousness. So that God consciousness, part of that God consciousness are within each one of us. Even Jeshua said in the New Testament, remember, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You know, it's within us. It's all right. But a lot of people, they don't even know what, what is kingdom of heaven. What is that for? But if you had the Aramaic, the, 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 the language of Jeshua, if you understood Malkuta de Shem Aya, Malkuta de Shem Aya is kingdom of heaven or queendom of heaven actually. But if we understood what it, all the part of that saying Malkuta de Shem Aya means, it actually means that the, the Shem of uh, the Shem Aya means that 
image of God in which we were born. It means consciousness, light, sound. It is the light, the power of life. It is that sacred seed of love. It is something we can, and if we hide that away, it's the most important part of our being. If we don't start to develop it, and the reason why we don't develop it is nobody knows about it. So nobody told us when we came in here. It was not because people were evil or anything. They just didn't know about it. So how could they say it to us? Now we know it. So we should start to develop it and tell our children and, and our family about it. And how could it start with being aware of it? Mm -hmm. How can we further on develop it? Very, very simple. Oh, yeah. By starting to, to, um, to walk the talk. What do you think, for example, is the, is the, would be the, the ideal life for a human? For some people, the ideal life would be to be so rich, they didn't have to work anymore and they could do whatever they wanted. But that story we have seen can be very tragically. Very few people can administer that. If you start, for example, if you feeling bad one day, you should not maybe project that sadness or this feeling around you. You should start to work with yourself. You could work with your breath. Take deep breath. Inhale through the heart. Exhale through the heart. I am all right. I am consciousness. And start to build up, start to work with yourself. You can go out and you can complain about, oh, this is wrong and this is wrong. You can also go out and send a smile to the world. So when you start to send out um, positive positivity, a lot of things will change. You see, we are 80% water, 80% water. It is proved many years ago that water is very perceptive to feelings. So if we are negative, it will, that water will be disturbed by it, will be poisoned by it and start to create a lot of trouble in our physical beings. And we will start to feel even worse and worse and we will be more and more negative. It is because of this, this is because of that. If we took care of ourselves and started to look into what is good for me and what is not good for me, not just open the television every time we were bored and just finding a, a crime story or a thriller movie or because all these things it goes deep into our being maybe we should find a, a good book instead something that will build us up with some positivity something we could start to learn from and start so we could start to practice it yeah there's so many things we can do and, it, and everybody can do it as i mean there's nobody that cannot do it it's so simple that everybody can can do it. It's just a matter of making a choice, you know. But of course, if you, most of us, we have to, 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 we need to go all out on the limb and look down in, you know, in nothing before we actually find out, okay, I cannot go any further. I need to do something else. I myself was lying three years in a bed because I could not take make that choice. So yeah. I know from my own experience yeah. that it's much better to, to do it while we are still able to do it. So we should not lie and wait for somebody to come and help us. And I also, when I, um, I'm looking back on our talk mm. and I feel, so when I have positive thoughts and it could, those thoughts would be bed, uh, would fall in a bedding full of love mm -hmm. that I could create another, another perspective for myself. Exactly. 
it is, you know, a lot of people, they say, for example, yeah, I'm not, I've done this for a week. It doesn't really work. <laughs> but you see, this is something that we should do for a long, long time. We should keep on doing it. And we should, every time we, will, we, we are falling into the trap of being, uh, pointing the finger at somebody else, we should just stop for a moment and say, hmm, what am I doing now? Why am I pointing my finger at this person? You know, there's so many, it's so easy to point the finger of anybody. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, we don't know why other people do what they do. We don't know their history. We don't know their background. They might have a very, very good reason for doing the things we don't understand why they're doing. So we should maybe keep our nose to ourselves and start to work on our own mischiefs and our own uh, things, you know, and and try to to have the gods to look into that and see, ah, why do I do this? And maybe ask myself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I always say this when somebody say that? You know, try to really, because a lot of time, nobody is evil, I think. There are very few people are, are so sick that you could call them evil. But, you know, if we, the moment that we know these things and we start to, to, to um, act against it, that is when you can say, then you, you could talk about evil. But as long as we don't, we are just innocent in a way, but, and then we are victims of our own stupidity. Yeah. And, and, uh, so, you know, I would like to, we, we need to take responsibility for ourselves. And I, I really feel that this is something, and for everything we do, if we cannot take responsibility for what we are doing, we should stop doing it. Yeah, you, have, what, you have a so, beautiful quote about this. Mm -hmm. I remember. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote it down. I have to look, uh, look it up. You say, mm -hmm. if not how, when, and if not us, who? Yeah, exactly. That's, um, we can always keep on postpone things and say, on, on Monday, I'll start to, to practice. Yeah. But that Monday never comes because we have forgotten. When Monday comes, we yeah. forgot all about it. And uh, then when it, we come to, to Thursday, oh yeah, I remember, I'm due next Monday then. Yeah. And yeah. so it goes, you know. <laughs> so we, are, we are responsible and we can change now on this right moment. Yeah. I, would, I wish I could say something mystical that, <laughs> that, yeah. that, that could really make people uh, excited and say, oh yeah, that's mystic and we can go... And if we open that box, there will be the Holy Grail, and I was the, I will be the one who found it. But there is such a box. It is inside each one of us. There is the Holy Grail. So we cannot just keep on looking for being spiritual tourists that wants another mysticism or another secret being revealed or something. The secret is revealed. We are enlightened. And now we must take responsibility for that enlightenment and go from there. And it's so simple that there's no excuse for not doing it. So that's, that's my, and if, I don't know if you could, if you could imagine the seer, that would be very much his um, few words that, uh, there's no way around this. And if you think it's going to be any harder than that, you must rethink that because to stay with that and do the basic things is the hardest thing. And I'm not saying that in order to, to uh, take the, the fun out of it because we can be happy as we do it, you know, and we should celebrate life. We should have that glass of red wine when we want it. As long as we feel that it's not interfering with our well-being on all planes, you know, 
and we should celebrate life in in all kinds of ways singing and dancing and rock and, and rolling taking, and, and taking responsibility at the same time yeah exactly yeah okay i think i think we have a beautiful i think so a beautiful too. interview <laughs> <laughs> I, too. Uh, of thank course, you very uh, much we could have talked a lot about uh, her history and so forth yeah but I, i believe that it's it's so much more um it's better to what is her what why is he here she here today yeah i i think there is so so much information and so much layers in what yeah. you talked about that people will find those connections where they can where the opening is in their hearts exactly, exactly. and that is um, so i want to thank you very much Lars. thank you very much thank you very much yeah. and I, i'm looking forward to see you in the end of september yes me too so bye have, have a good summer yeah you also bye bye <laughs> thank you and also i want to thank you dear listener for listening to this episode with Lars Mühl. And I want to invite you. On behalf of the Urk Group, we are very delighted to invite you for our Urk Café meeting and a workshop with Lars Mühl on Friday evening, the 23 of September, from 7 until 9 o'clock in the evening in the Ursula Kapel to Romont. More information about this workshop you can find underneath this podcast. There is a limited amount of places, so when you want to come, you have to react very soon. When you want to have more information about Lars and his work, you can find this on his website www.larsmuhl.dk. When you want to have more information about me and the workshops I organize around this team, you can See that on my website, www.marjanbovens.nl. I wish you a very beautiful day and perhaps till we meet again. Bye bye.